Hello everyone, today we're going to start diving into talking about some of the mechanisms and complexities of enzymes and proteins. We're going to focus on association and dissociation constants between ligands and the binding sites on enzymes and how that can help us understand ligand affinity and the likelihood of different ligands attaching to proteins. Since ligands have a reversible interaction with the enzyme, a lot of the math and equations that we're going to use throughout this video are built off those that we've learned in chemical equilibrium, explaining reversible reactions. So we're going to use those same concepts to explain reversible interactions between ligands and their enzymes. Since we're looking at protein-ligand interactions through the eyes of equilibrium, since that we have that reversible reaction, we're going to look at the protein-ligand complex as the product and the concentration of the protein and the concentration of the ligand as the reactants. And that's why we get products over reactants. Same thing as we were talking about with the chemical equilibrium. Now, for that forward reaction, we have the association constant, Ka, which represents the likelihood of the ligand interacting with the protein to form the product. And the KD, or the reverse reaction, the dissociation constant, is the likelihood of the ligand detaching from the protein. A higher Ka, or association constant, means that that ligand has a higher affinity for that protein. Enzymes are not limited to having one binding site and one ligand. They have multiple binding sites, multiple subunits, and multiple ligands that can interact at given times with the protein. We have to broaden our example or understanding of interactions with enzymes and ligands, and this is where theta comes into play. Theta is the fraction of ligand binding sites on the protein that are occupied at any given time by a specific ligand. So to find theta, we divide the binding sites that are occupied over the total number of binding sites for that given protein, which is usually found by dividing the concentration, the PL complex, by the concentration of the PL complex plus the concentration of the protein. Actually easier to find theta if we reference it with a dissociation constant, KD. Referencing theta with KD, we simplify the equation to just reference the concentration of the ligand plus the dissociation constant. Interesting enough, when theta equals one half, we have the same value for the dissociation constant or one over Ka. Conversation of talking about enzymes with multiple binding sites that interact with the ligands, we have to talk about allosteric proteins. We gotta remember that when a ligand interacts with a binding site on an enzyme, it causes a conformational change in the protein. And allosteric proteins are proteins with multiple binding sites, and through the binding of one ligand, it will impact the binding of ligands with other binding sites on the enzyme. This can either be a positive, cooperative binding experience or impact, or a negative, cooperative binding impact. Positive meaning that the binding of one ligand increases the binding affinity of others with the protein, and negative being that the binding of one ligand lowers the affinity for more ligands to interact with the protein. See how we alter some of the equations that we talked about in previous slides now that we have multiple binding sites using N to represent the number of binding sites or ligand interactions that we'll have with the protein. And in order for us to tell whether or not we have cooperative or negative cooperative binding interactions with the ligands and the enzyme, we use something called the Hill equation and the Hill plot. Plotting the log of theta over theta minus 1 and the log of the concentration of the ligand, we get a linear relationship that helps us understand whether or not the ligand interactions with the protein are cooperative or not. If the slope, which is represented with n, equals 1, then the binding of one ligand is not cooperative with the affinity or the binding of other ligands with the enzyme. If n is greater than 1, then there is positive cooperative binding. That means that if a ligand binds to the protein, it's gonna increase the affinity for more ligands to bind with the protein through conformation changes. And if one is greater than N, then it's negative cooperative binding. That means that if a ligand binds with a protein, it's gonna decrease the affinity 
of more ligands interacting with the protein. There are two main models to help us explain cooperative binding in enzymes, one called the concerted and the other one called the sequential. Now, these two models are not exclusive, they're blended in different proteins and enzymes, and I tried my best to display both methods. When we talk about the concerted method, we talk about that each of the subunits in the enzyme have their own equilibrium between their two conformations, and so that at either one of those states, we can have a higher or lower equilibrium or affinity with ligands, whereas with the sequential binding method, as one subunit binds with the ligand, it in, uh, influences a conformation change in nearby subunits to change their conformations to have a higher affinity or be in a higher affinity state for their ligands. Okay, so I'm well aware we said the word ligand and protein and enzymes so many times throughout this video. But let's wrap everything we've talked about in the last five minutes for this really good example about hemoglobin and its interaction with its ligand, oxygen. You may know hemoglobin is the common protein that is used to transport oxygen in the blood. Hemoglobin has two major conformations though, one with different binding affinities towards oxygen. When oxygen is absent, it's called in the T state. And when the interactions or the affinity to oxygen is needed to increase, it's in the R state. At the hill plot for hemoglobin, we can see that the transition between the T state and the R state actually has a N value that is greater than 1. So the transition between the T state and the R state increases or has cooperative binding to oxygen, raises the affinity towards hemoglobin and oxygen. Additionally, we can learn why carbon monoxide is so dangerous to us because of binding affinity to enzymes. Carbon monoxide has a 20,000 times stronger or higher binding affinity to the heme groups in hemoglobin than oxygen does. So carbon monoxide is going to occupy all the hemoglobin that we need to transport oxygen throughout our blood. This is extremely dangerous to us. Hence. It's all because of binding affinity that carbon monoxide is so dangerous. I hope this video helped you understand affinity and association, dissociation, and cooperative binding when talking about enzymes. In the next video, we're going to start exploring more of the kinetic side of enzymes with Michaelis Metin Kinetics. And all the infographics that you see me use throughout this video can be downloaded in the link below. And I hope you guys have a great day.